Hello everyone. Friends, we might have noticed that the size of dairy milk or many other chocolates are getting smaller day by day. We might have dismissed it assuming some profit strategies of the companies. But the hard reality is the complicated supply chain and the economics of cocoa, which is the prime ingredient of chocolate. I want to show you one data. This is the cocoa price table from 1960 to current. And if you see the graph, cocoa price has reached an all-time high of 6755 USD per ton of cocoa. The price of cocoa rose to new all-time highs in New York. Monday saw futures reach a new high climbing 4.6%. Cocoa futures are up by more than $1,000 per metric ton since the start of the year. The impact of cocoa futures soaring over 100% in the last year. Cocoa futures were trading at a 46-year high. What does that mean? In simple words, it will sell at a 46-year high in, in the future at a predetermined time. And if you see the commodity table of agriculture products, while most of the commodities are falling or decently rising, cocoa is the only commodity which has substantially surged in the last year by 145%. So what's really going on in the cocoa belt? And how is this going to impact India? So let me give you a structure or mind map we'll be following in today's episode. Firstly, we will understand the geography of cocoa belt. Next, we will understand what's going wrong in this belt. Then we'll see how is it impacting the cocoa price in three terms, mining, El Nino, and Silicon Valley. Next, we'll see how it's impacting the Indian chocolate market. And lastly, we'll see how India can transform this crisis into opportunity. So let's begin. So to understand what's causing this upsurge in the cocoa price, first we must understand what is this cocoa belt. Look, cocoa beans are a very rare plant which grows under humid climate. They need a constant temperature of 18 to 30 degrees Celsius. But there is a catch here. They shouldn't be directly under the sun. They are more of a shade-loving crop. They require humidity more than heat, which means a decent amount of rainfall along with high temperature. That's why cocoa is cultivated along with other plants like coconut or under the shades of forest. Now, this geographical condition is so rare that it's only available at 20 degree latitude north and south of equator. And this is called the cocoa belt. And these are all the regions under the cocoa belt. Yes, there is India as well. And we'll talk about it further in the video. But for now, the question that evolves here is, what's going wrong in this cocoa belt, which is causing a cocoa price upsurge? See, even though cocoa could be planted in all the regions of the cocoa belt, cocoa processing specifically requires lots of expertise and labor. And there are two countries in the Western Africa, which have preferred this crop for a long time, giving them expertise in the process. I'm talking about Ghana and Ivory Coast. The Ivory Coast and Ghana. More than 60% of the world's cocoa is grown in these two countries, the Ivory Coast and Ghana. These are the cocoa powerhouses of the world. And there is something terribly going wrong in these two countries, which is affecting the entire supply economics. To explain this, let me show you the export composition of these two countries. 37% of Ghana's export revenue comes from gold, 25% from crude petroleum. 18% from cocoa beans and nuts, and 20% from other products. Similarly, 41% of Ivory Coast export revenue comes from cocoa, 12% from mineral fuel, another 12% from precious metals and pearls like gold, 10 from rubber, 9% from edible oil, and 15% from other. And you can see that these two countries are not just major exporters of cocoa, but also gold and petroleum. And you know it very well what happens if gold and petroleum is found in a country, right? They were quickly becoming as one of the top 10 richest economies of Africa. As a result, they become a darling economy for the Western investors. And like any other government will do, the government of Ghana and Ivory Coast took this opportunity to raise debt to further accelerate the economy. But things started to turn wild after COVID. The funds which were taken for infrastructure development were started to be used for consumption expenses like food supplies and medicines. As a result, these funds were not generating any return on investment to pay the interest. Moreover, the corruption and the mismanagement of funds further pushed the country into an economic nightmare. We went on a binge, a borrowing binge. So we borrowed for projects, projects that were consumption, we borrowed for projects that the return, we never, we didn't have a second look at the return on capital. We didn't get value for money because of corruption. And then we crashed. In December 2022, Ghana's external debt to GDP ratio turned to 92%. It means if the GDP of Ghana is rupees 100, Ghana took an external debt of 92 rupees. 
and most of the debt money were not even producing any returns. Consequently, Ghana defaulted on its loan. And Ivory Coast was not going through any better situation. But the question that evolves here is, how is this affecting the cocoa price? This is where it takes a very interesting turn. Since the country was going through an economic crisis and high inflation, it made more sense and profitable for the farmers to use the land for illegal gold mining which were previously used for cocoa plantation. This substantially plummeted the supply of cocoa. In the case of Ghana, it's illegal mining. Mines operated illegally by small-scale diggers. These small illegal mines are popping up everywhere in the country, even in Ghana's cocoa plantations, and this is causing a fall in production. This bare land was slated with cocoa, but today it has been ravaged by the hunt for gold by illegal miners. One of the farmlands destroyed by illegal mining in the western region. Many interventions have been implemented by the government, but the activity continues. But that's not the only thing on the plateau. The second influential factor which further affected the supply of cocoa was El Nino. No, it's not an animated movie. It's a global climatic phenomenon which comes once in two to seven years, causing drought in some places while flooding in some other places. Well, I'm not going into the details of El Nino because every part of the world is affected in a different way. In terms of Western Africa, El Nino caused heavy rainfall in this area. This not only deteriorated the productivity of the crops, but also caused disease in the crops. This further shrank the supply of cocoa in the market. And while the global consumption of chocolate is increasing after COVID, there is a falling supply. This year, the analysts predict that there will be 30% less supply in the market in comparison to the demand. This is the lowest since 1985. We keep discussing the impact of a climate pattern known as El Nino, and that's causing a lower supply of cocoa. The region is grappling with a double blow of heavy rains and a devastating rot causing disease, leaving cocoa production in dire state. So if you understood, this is the story of the supply side, okay? The supply is less, but there is another entity who is pushing the demand side artificially, creating a more gap in the supply and the demand. Yes, I am talking about the hedge funds in Silicon Valley. While the cocoa price was rising, the investors in Silicon Valley predicted this rise and invested heavily in the commodity market. Hedge funds are getting in on the cocoa price surge. What does that mean? Investment bankers may be making your chocolates unaffordable. Cocoa prices caught the eye of Wall Street bankers. Hedge funds that traditionally stay away were lured by potential profits in cocoa. They began investing in the commodity, buying up contracts and fueling the surge in prices. This insanely pushed the cocoa prices to new heights. I don't know what should I call this, a smart investing or exploitation, because while the farmers in the Western Africa suffered, chocolate companies slashed their profits, these investors will be having Christmas in the summer. But what made me curious is how is this going to affect the Indian chocolate market? Well, to understand the impact, we must understand the Indian chocolate market the consumer behavior and how big is it? Look, India is not a very premium chocolate market right now. It means the majority of the companies in India use vegetable fats like palm oil and coconut oil instead of premium cocoa butter to make chocolates. This is called compound chocolate. Well, compound chocolate is not just an Indian thing. It's used globally, but it holds a majority share in the Indian chocolate market. But until now, there is a rapid shift happening in this market. The consumer trends are sharply shifting towards dark chocolate instead of milk chocolates. The CEO of Lotus Chocolate Company, G.S. Ram said, demand for dark chocolates has been going up because of health concerns. Earlier, people did not favor them much because of the bitter taste. At the same time, the disposable income of Indian households is increasing day by day. People are ready to pay the premium price for dark chocolates and premium chocolates. That's why the Indian chocolate market reached $2.6 billion and it's expected to reach $5.3 billion by 2032. So now we know that Indian chocolate market is huge and it's getting bigger and bigger. So now you must be wondering, if a huge part of India falls under the cocoa belt, then we must be producing our own cocoa and the price increase in the export market shouldn't impact us at all, right? Ideally, it shouldn't have. But that's where the problem is. Even though a majority part of South India falls under the cocoa belt, we only produce 28,000 tons of cocoa. Comparatively, we have a domestic demand of more than a lakh ton, which is increasing every year as we saw. So as an immediate solution, we started importing heavily to fulfill the demand. In the year 2022, 
we imported a record 1,11,000 tons of cocoa beans. This is four times our domestic production. So the impact of rising cocoa price is felt directly in the heart of Indian chocolate market. The manager of Lotus Chocolate Company, YBS Siva Prasad said, they are incurring a loss due to rise in the raw material price. The company may consider a renewal of MRP or reduction in the grammage if the rising trend persists. Now why I call it a wake-up call and lost an opportunity for India? Because Indonesia produces 7 lakh tons of cocoa beans every year and they mostly export them. In one of our videos, we discussed how Indonesia is beating us in the leather footwear industry and here we go with cocoa as well. The problem is lack of awareness among the Indian farmers about the cocoa production and the profitability. It is estimated that a farmer on average can earn between 30,000 to 60,000 rupees per annum extra if it's intercropped with coconut. They don't even need an extra land for cocoa production, just a different technique and management. The southern part of India is one of the rarest places on this planet to produce cocoa. We can not only fulfill our internal demand but also become a major exporter like Indonesia. As the global cocoa supply is suffering, India can turn this crisis into opportunity. And that's where the responsibility of Indian youth also comes into play. Young farmers can use modern farming techniques and innovation to make India a major cocoa exporter. And that's the end of today's videos guys. I'll link down all the resources I used to make this video and I'll request you to use them if you are planning to take any decision regarding this industry. If you found anything valuable, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.